welcome students to our next class of uh, non linear programming we are having today integer programming problem uh, by a method you know branch and bound technique so there are many techniques you know for solving integer type of problems but we are, we are having a mainly this branch and bound technique in our syllabus so we'll see what does this particularly branch and bound technique uh, actually what it means actually okay please uh, see the whole video we'll have a clear concept of how to solve this integer type of pro problems using branch and bound technique and if you found this video useful you can share it with your friends and subscribe to my channel make pro classes okay so you know branch and bound technique is a very you know effective one in solving uh, mixed integer linear as well as you can say non linear type of programming problems okay so this method branch and bound we are going to use it is very effective in mixed integer that is the where while we are having say mixed integer you know say 3 or 3.1 or 2 or 2.5 these are the mixed integer type of linear problems or you can say as well as in non linear problem we are also using this type of mixed integer type non linear problem so this particular method i can tell you it was first uh, originally developed by land and dog land and dog in the year of you know uh, 60s i think okay to solve integer uh, linear programming problems and later was it was later modified by the king d a k i n the king okay and subsequently this method has been extended to solve uh, non linear actually first it was for linear only then subsequently it was been modified and changed and been extended you know to solve non linear mixed integer programming problems okay the basic you know uh, the solution type you already know but i must tell you what the generalized form we are going to solve the different problems as you know form of the different problems different mixed integer problems looks like somewhat say minimization problem we are having in a form say minimization minimization of fx and it may be subjected to constraints you know gj of x you already know the form but i must tell you must one more that is given as greater than or equal to 0 where j equal to you know 1 2 up to m you can say and hk is another you know uh, constraint where it can be taken as you know equal to 0 and k will be you know 1 2 and it will be up to p okay now xj they are taking as integer only okay xj they are taking as integer only and that could be z equal to uh, j equal to i can write 1 2 up to n0 and n0 should be you know less than equal to n and x x x can be you know uh, x1 x2 up to xn and that can be up to have a power of t only okay now <coughs> in the design vector x the first n0 variables i can write it like that n0 okay first n0 variables are uh, defined as you know integer variables it can be termed as integer variables okay but if you know n0 equal to n the problem becomes a all integer you can tell all integer programming problems you can say okay so a design vector x is called a continuous this is a continuous you can say continuous feasible solution solution if x satisfies constraints this one okay and this one so if it if this particular x satisfies this this two constants it can be termed as continuous feasible solution okay and uh, if this x also satisfies this this uh, condition that is xj equal to integer okay it can be termed as you know integer feasible solution if it satisfies this equation also it can be termed as termed as integer feasible solution okay so what do we learn from this 
if the decision variable you can say or design factor you can say this satisfies this first equation of this constraints it can be termed as continuous feasible solution and if it also satisfies this um, last you know condition that is xj equal to integer then it is known as integer feasible solution okay now uh, the simplest method of solving an integer optimization problem involves enumerating all integer points all integer points discarding discarding infeasible ones evaluating the objective function at all integer feasible points and identifying the point that has the best ob objective function value okay although this you know such an exhaustive process I mean, search in the solution space is simple to implement it will be computationally expensive even for moderate size problems today also okay so this branch and bound method can be considered as a refined enumeration method in which of most of the non promising you know integer points are discarded without testing them also also note that the process of uh, complete you know enumeration can be used only if the problem is an all integer programming problems when it satisfies this condition okay so for mixed integer problems in which one or more variables may assume continuous values the process of complete enumeration cannot be used okay now in this branch and bound technique uh, the integer problem is not directly solved okay rather the method Uh, solves a continuous problem obtaining by relaxing there is a term you know relaxing the uh, integer restrictions we usually use the term in uh, branch and bound technique relaxing the integer uh, restrictions in the problem they will be given as a i will show you the, in the problem only uh, just for now you just know that oh, they they will be giving as x j say as a integer okay but we will relax this concept you know we will take any value it may be an integer or no integer also okay so this idea of taking this as any value is known as relaxing the integer restrictions in branch and bound technique okay that is very important and we are going to use this concept only to solve this particular integer programming using branch and bound technique also okay and <clears throat> now uh, and the method first solves a continuous problem obtaining by relaxing the integer restriction on the variables and if the solution of the continuous problem happens to be uh, an integer solution it represents the optimum when we are getting the uh, you know as integers these are integers we are having the you know optimum solution of the integer problem okay otherwise at least one of the integer value say xi must assume a non integral value okay if xi is not an integer we can always find integer xi such that we will be using this concept as well in the solution part of the um, problem uh, it can be written as say this one this can be written as this one and it should be less than xi you know plus 1 okay so that will be the you know um, two limits of this particular uh, given xi okay now that this two can be treated as sub problems also then two sub problems are for formulated okay one with upper bound this is the upper bound we can say upper bound constant as you know xi should be less than equal to you know xi okay and the other one should be like this one xi you know greater than equal to xi plus 1 so that will be your another sub problem okay this process you know this process why it is called as branch this process of formulation of sub problems sub problems s u b p r o b l e m s sub problems this this process of finding the sub problems is known as branching only okay so before directly going to the you know technique you must know this why it is known as branch and bound technique what are the basic things we are going to use in this particular branch and bound technique you should have a clear concept of the basics and the terminologies we are going to use in this particular branch and bound technique so i am telling you this the important terms are branching okay now uh, there is one, one one more important thing i must tell you uh, this branching process eliminates some portion of the continuous space we will learn in a when we will we will have a clear concept when we will be so solving a problem using this particular thing for this for now only you just have the a theoretical concept i am telling you okay the branching process eliminates some portion of the continuous space that is not feasible for the integer problem while ensuring that none of the integer feasible solutions are eliminated now each of the sub problems are solved again as a continuous problem it can be seen that the solution of continuous problems forms a node node 
okay uh, and from each node from each node will be uh, two branches may originate okay two branches will be will be having this type of branches you know in solving this integer programming so just for now we just have the concept okay this is the node from where two branches maximum of two branches can originate okay now um, i can say one more thing as a uh, the process of branching and solving a sequence of continuous problems um, that already I discussed um, is continued until an integer feasible solution is found for one of the two continuous problems. Okay, And when such a feasible integer problem is found, the corresponding value of the objective functions becomes an upper bound on the minimum value of the objective function. Okay, We will see in the later portion of the example. And at this stage, we can eliminate from further consideration all the continuous solutions. That is the nodes, you know, there is the nodes whose objective functions values are larger than the upper bound. We will see what is the upper bound, what is the lower bound or as well. The nodes that are eliminated are said to be, have been fathomed. There is a term, you know, that is known as fathomed. F A T H O M E D fathomed E fathomed. Okay, so you must know these terms. These terms are very important while solving this branch and round technique. Okay, so the nodes that are eliminated, that are eliminated, are known as fathomed. Okay, because it is not possible to find a better integer solution for from these nodes. From these nodes, we can say we can say this as fathomed. This particular. Okay, so I will see you what actually fathom denotes in a particular example while, while we will be solving this particular problem. Now, uh, uh, you can have, okay, so the nodes that are eliminated are said to have been fathomed because it is not possible to find a better integer solution from these nodes, actually, okay, from these nodes. There is a solution spaces, you can say, and the value of the upper bound of the uh, objective function is updated whenever a better bound is obtained, okay, we will solve this. And it can be seen that a node can be fathomed if any of the conditions are true. Uh, the conditions I can tell you that the conditions for being fathomed are first condition I can write it as a continuous solution. You can write it as continuous solution uh, is in is an you know integer feasible solution. Second point, the problem uh, does not have a continuous feasible solution. Or you can say, last point, you can say the optimal uh, value of the continuous problem, you can say, Uh, is larger is larger than the current upper bound you can say okay so if any of this you know any of these three conditions is coming over in the in solving branch and bound technique using branch and bound technique in integer program problem you can say uh, as a branch the node uh, from where the branches are coming out this can be fathomed okay you can write it as a fathomed okay so this is the concept of fathomed you know now uh, the algorithm continues to select a node from for further branching until all the nodes have been fathomed okay at that stage a particular fathom node that has the integer feasible solution with the uh, lowest value of the objective function gives the optimum solution of the original nonlinear integer programming problem. That's all. Now let us see a problem. Okay, say we have a problem of uh, say maximization type. Okay, I am writing it over here as say maximization of J do we have as five x one plus you know six x two subjected to you know x one plus x two uh, less than or equal to five for first constraint and 4x1 plus 7x2 that should be less than equal to you know 28 for second constraint okay now you know already x1 x2 are always greater than equal to 0 and one more one more assumptions we are taking over here as x1 x2 are not assumption actually they have given in the problem only x1 x2 are integer okay 
now this is integer programming problem so we are having this you know uh, this assumptions as well x1 x2 are integer now we have to apply that you know concept i already already told you that we have to uh, we have to use a relaxation uh, that is a integer relaxation sometimes we have to take that assumption to solve this problem as well okay so we will be considering uh, as this may or may not be integer this decision variables x1 and x2 okay that is known as integer relaxation okay so let us uh, you know how to construct this type of problem this is a you know is a very simple one uh, as because this is a linear type of problem so you know how to uh, solve graphically uh, a linear um, problem you know so let me construct the graph for you say we are having this as the origin point and say you know how to solve this one let me tell you once more how to solve uh, we are having x1 x2 as 5 for for timing you can say as 5 okay as because we have to construct the line so we are taking as uh, inequality as equal to 5 okay so if you construct the lines for say one x1 and x2 we are having this type of uh, points uh, for x1 putting x1 as 0 we are getting x2 as 5 and as well okay similarly for x2 also we are getting this type of points and for the second equation 4x1 you know plus 7x2 equal to 28 we are given over here we can easily find the two points also for constructing the graph you know, as x1 and x2 and the points will be 0 4 and you know 7 and 0 okay so you just have to plot these points and say this one is x1 here and this one is x2 okay so you just need to 1 2 3 4 say okay 5 6 7 8 you can say now 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 you can take a scale and pencil and you can graduate this you know in equally wide spaces i'm just showing you how to find the graphical solution of this particular problem okay so first we are having this you know uh, x1 0 7 and uh, x2 as 4 0 and x1 as 0 5 and uh, x2 as uh, 5 0 okay so we will choose these points over in this graph so first point will be our um, one two three four you can say this is our four comma zero as we are having this one for x1 we are having uh sorry we are not having four zero we are having you know zero and seven now you can see if we have uh, drawn the you know points different points we are going to have the graph for this one zero comma five 1 2 3 4 5 so this will be our point and 0 comma 7 uh, sorry 7 and 0 so 7 comma 0 5 6 7 this is 7 comma 0 and for x2 we are having two points that is 0 comma 4 this one and you know uh, 0 comma 5 as well okay so we are going to construct this uh, two constants in this particular graph so a uh, first constant we are having x1 plus x2 equal to 5 so we will construct this five lines okay so somewhat this one and the next one will be somewhat this one okay so we are having two constant lines over here and these are less than equal to type so you can have these directions that means it is directed towards this one okay uh, to, towards the origin you know so this one so that means it is a uh, less than equal to constant okay now the feasible region is somewhat in this region okay this one okay. so this one is a feasible region now if you check uh, we are having one two three and four corner points okay you all already know how to solve this graphical pro problems using uh, uh, graphical solution of this particular LPP linear type problems. I have made a video of this graphical solution. You can see in my video also as well. And you know how to check the uh, optimal uh, solution. That is each and every point, each and every point, this 0, 0, 5, 0, you know, and this point, this point is coming to be, you know, and this one is coming to be 7, 3 if you calculate in your home only. Okay. So these are the corner points, you know. 
0.45.0.0.073.83 because it lies in the uh, corners of the physical region only okay so this is you know we are having two as well okay this is the x1 equal to 0 line and this is x2 equal to 0 line okay so now you know you have constructed the linear problem using the graphical method and you have founded the corner points now if you put the values of this you know in this particular uh, objective functions you are going to have the optimal solution you can say the uh, what we are saying maximization okay so you can say the maximization of the problem can be found out by putting uh, the different corner points okay now if you put, put the values of this particular corner points in this particular objective function you are getting the maximum value of z at this particular point only that is 7 by 3 or 8 by 3 this can also be written as in the form you know x1 i can write x1 equal to 7 by 3 or you can write as 2.33 and x2 equal to you can write uh, 8 by 3 or you can write 2.67 now if you put this particular values of x1 x2 in this particular objective function maximization of z you are finding the maximum value of z as uh, x z equal to you can write as 27.67 okay that is the maximum value of z. up to this point you are very clear you already know how to solve this type of problems now we are solving this integer problem okay so there is a concept of you know x1 x2 are taken as to be integer they have to be integer one we cannot take this value we cannot take this value uh, as also we can find the maximum value is coming or optimum value is coming as z equals to 27.65 but we cannot stick to this particular solution you know but as you, as we have uh, we are saying that x1 x2 are integer but we are taking and uh, solving this problem by relaxing the concept of this uh, integer value of x1 and x2 so we are having x1 as 2.33 and x2 is 2.67 now since we are having this as non integer values of x1 and x2 we have to make you know sub problem there comes the concept of branching and bounding technique okay now the first rule says we have to make a branch or we have to make a sub problem out of these two non integer values so how to make that in order to make that branch okay you have to choose whose value is larger among these two addition variables okay look x2 is having 2.67 and x1 is having 2.33 so you can easily conclude that 2.67 is larger than 2.33 so we have to make branch from this particular addition variable only that is 2.67 okay so i can write it as i have already shown you that we have to make a upper bound as well as you know lower bound okay this one should be less than equal to you know xi plus one okay now how to make this you know limits let us say we are having 2.67 so we are uh, we will be having branching from this x2 only okay now let me write let me show you how to make the branch okay I can write it as sub problem one. As z equal to you know twenty seven point six seven as we are getting x one equal to you know two point three three and x two equal to two point six seven. Okay, so this is the sub problem one. Now we have to make. This you can say also node also okay as we are making branches out of this particular node so we will be making another branch like this one okay now what is the concept look this is the maximum value so you have to take x2 now considering the x2 we have to construct the upper bound and the lower bound okay now the ranges will be like that one so 2.67 is your value of x2 now this 2.67 as the value of you know x2 is greater uh, although both of them are uh, no integer type of uh, values and our objective is to find uh, as x1 and x2 as integer only okay so we have to find the integer values of x1 and x2 where the solution will be optimal one okay that is our main objective you should keep in mind always that we have to find x1 and x2 as of integer type but you can see both of them are non integer type in the first sub problem you can say so and we have to proceed or we have to make branch with the greater value of the two 
among the two decision variables. Now you can see 2.67 is the greater value, so we'll make branch. Now let us see 2.67 lies between 2 and 3, you know. Okay, so the value of x2 cannot be in between 2 and 3. So the ranges will be, uh, you know, it will be less than or equal to 2, that is from 0 to 2 as we have already know that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0 so it will be 0 to 2 okay and the other uh, range will be you know x2 will be greater than or equal to 3 only okay now we have got two you know uh, values of x2 or you can say the range now we have to proceed or we have to make branches with this new uh, you can say also these are the new constraints okay x2 less than or equal to 2 and x2 greater than or equal to 2 so i can write it over like that um, say this one is our x2 less than or equal to 2 and this is you know x2 uh, say greater than or equal to 3 okay now the main you know structure of this particular problem somewhat looks like um, this one only i can write it as say The first equation remains as it is, that is x, x1 plus x2 less than or equal to 5 and sec, second one also 4x1 plus you know 7x2, uh, it remains as equal to 28 or you can say less than or equal to 28 you can write, okay. And the second equation you can write as x2 less than or equal to 2, okay. So this is one set. And another set you can write as x1 plus x2, you know, less than or equal to 5, 4x1 plus 7x2, less than or equal to 28, and the x2 should be greater than or equal to 3. That is the second set of problem. Okay. So now we have two different set of problems, and we have to find the uh, values of z. Okay. For this particular two uh, equations of constants you can say okay and then you have to put the values as well in these two you know branches okay? now if you put we have already the graph of x1 plus x2 equal to 5 and 4x1 plus 7x2 equal to 28 we already constructed the uh, graph now we have to introduce this extra the extra variable x2 less than or equal to 2 graph okay now if you draw x2 less than or equal to 2 say this one let me construct it say this is our new one say this is the 0 comma 2 you can say 0 comma 2 okay now if you construct say x2 equal to 2 if you construct this line okay now less than or equal to 2 that means it will be directed towards you know the origin that is the 0 comma 0 okay so now the feasible reason somewhat likes this one okay this is not your feasible region anymore okay so this becomes your new feasible region and these are the you know these points these points these points and these points are the corner points of this new equation okay now if you find the uh, value okay so you already know uh, this line uh, say this is the third line you can say okay now this third line and this is your first line you can say and this is two line second line okay now from first line and third line this intersects at this point only okay now if you solve this first line or you can say this one this first line and say this second line you are already having x2 equal to 2 so if you put x2 equal to 2 over here in this first equation you will get x1 equals to you know 5 minus 2 that is 3 only okay so we are having at this point of coordinates are as can be written as x1 equal to 3 and you already have x2 equal to 2 now if you put all the values of these corner points of this particular feasible region new feasible region you can say you will be getting the maximum or optimal solution of this function that is a z that is a 5x1 plus 6x2 if, if you put 5x1 that is 5 into 3 plus you know 6 into 2 that is 5 into 3 gives you 15 
I am putting it over here. 5x1 plus 6x2 equal to gives you 5 into x1 that is 3 and 6 into you know 2. So it will give 15 plus 12 that is you know 27 only. Okay. Now you can see we are having the x1 and x2 both are in integer forms. That was our motto to find that x1 and x2 should be integer one. And we, we are getting optimal solution as 27. But this 27, although it is less than 27.67, that is the optimal solution we earlier found with these two, you know, two constraints. But uh, this is much lesser than, but it is somewhat closer than previous one also. Okay. So for this one, I can write as say z equal to, I can write 27, x1 equal to 3. And x2 equal to I can write 2. Okay, no problem, I think. Now this one is known as lower bound. This is lower bound. LB means lower bound. Okay. Now bound means we cannot branch anymore as because so I can write bound means bound means we cannot bound, uh, branch anymore as because uh, both the decision variables are in integer form. So you know what is bound bound. Okay, so it is clear what is bound. That is, we cannot branch anymore from this node particular. Bound. Okay, now it is. It can also be termed as lower bound as because value um, of z is very close to the previous one. That is twenty seven. We are getting and previous one was twenty seven point six one, and it is known as lower bound as because uh, we are trying to maximize. As you already know, is a maximization problem. So we are trying to maximize as to the, as the same time we are seeking integer values of x1 and x2 as well. That is our main motto over here. So it can be termed as lower band bound also as we are getting lower value of the previous one. Okay. And we are also having, you know, the integer values. So we cannot bound, we cannot uh, branch from this. Okay. So we can term this as lower bound. We have to stop over here only okay now if we come to this particular x2 greater than 3 for this for this you know uh, uh, set of constants we are having a different uh, graph on okay now for this type of constant x2 equal to 3 say this one is a 3 so i can write as okay here this gives you you know x2 greater than equal to 3 this is x2 greater than not less than so it will be directed towards this this side that is away from the you know uh, this origin you can say okay away from the origin now x2 greater than 3 that means in this direction only and this will be your new optimal solution okay this this only this portion just think of this as this one okay so this only portion will be your feasible portion for now okay now if you solve this particular you know uh, equations as uh, say this uh, you know this particular line two this two line and this, this is the say three line now it is your new three line okay think of this as your new thing uh, uh, new line that is the three line okay now if you solve equation two and three we are having x1 and x2 values as i can write it over here as from you know, 2 and 3 I can write it as x2 equal to 3 you can solve it easily from 2 and 3 you already know how to solve so you are getting x2 equal to 3 and x1 equal to 1.75 only okay now now uh, if you put you are having this corner points okay over here here and here if you put all the values and this point gives you the value of x2 equal to 3 let me write it over here this point this corner point gives you x2 equal to 3 and x1 equal to you know 1.75 only okay for this point now if you find optimal solutions for putting all the uh, values of these corner points, you will be find, finding the optimal solution or the maximization uh, for this maximization problem that is the maximum value of z at this particular point only that is x2 
uh, equal to 3 and x1 equal to 1.7. The value will be coming around z equal to, you know, uh, 26.75 only. Okay. So I can write it as this one, you know, z equal to, I can write 26.75 and, you know, x1 equal to 1.75 and x2 equal to 3. Okay. So I can write it over here. Now we can see how to make the branches. Okay. So we are having two uh, ranges x2 less than equal to 2, x2 greater than equal to 3. From these two branches, we are getting the optimal value of z as 27 and 26.75. And for this one, we are having the lower bound as because we are having the x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 2 with which are both, which both x1 and x2 are integer forms only. So, this is the lower bound. Now, coming to this particular, uh, this branch, we are having z equal to 26.75 as optimal solution at this particular, you know, uh, counter point. But we are having x1 equal to, you know, 1.75, which is not an integer one. And x2 equal to 3, which is an integer one. Now, we have to make, we have to take this as a node. And we have to make again branches from this, you know, node only okay now you have to consider this this branch as a node only okay now if you if you have to make branch from this particular node you have to consider this x1 value as this is a non integer type so the same formula follows for this one also you have to consider x1 equal to 1.75 uh, and 1.75 you know 1.75 it lies in between 1 and 2 only okay so in order to make this uh we have to find the integer value of x1 so the limits will be somewhat like that x1 less than or equal to 1 but it will lie in between 0 to 1 as because we are having this assumption as well x1 and x2 should be greater than or equal to 2 and this x1 will be next you know range will be x1 that is will be greater than or equal to 2 so next branch will be like somewhat like that one will be x1 less than equal to 1 and second one will be x2 uh, sorry x1 that is will be greater than equal to 2 now from this two we will have to make another two branches now again we have to write this particular you know uh, constant equations and we have to introduce this again these values as well okay including these values as well x2 less than equal to 2 and x2 less than equal to 3 as well okay now let us construct now i have constructed a new graph as the previous one was uh, some somewhat like clumsy one so I had, had to make a new one for you for better understanding, you know. Now, look, we are having this one as the lower bound. Already we have found this as the lower bound. So we cannot proceed from this side only. So we have stopped here uh, in this node only. Now we have considered this as a new node and we have started branching from this as well. Okay. So you can see this as a 1.75 and we have constructed this as new introducing a new constants uh, x1 greater than equal to 2 and x1 less than equal to 1. So the new uh, new equations can be again written as uh, somewhat like that uh, x1 uh, plus x2 you know less than equal to 5 and 4x1 uh, plus 7x2 uh, that is uh, less than equal to 28 as well and for this one equal to uh, x2 you can write as well x2 greater than equal to 3 and we are having x1 greater than equal to 2 for one set of problem and for the second set you can write it as a this remains same and only this changes that in place of x1 greater than equal to 2 you can write x1 less than 1 so this is a set of problem and for this set of problem you are having this one as similar only introducing this one extra okay so for one we are having this one set of equation and for the second we are having you know this one set of equation so we have to plot accordingly okay now if i plot the x2 greater than equal to 3 we are having uh, say x2 greater than equal to 3 we are having say over here okay so i can write it as x2 and greater than or equal to 3 now we are having the first equation as x1 greater than or equal to 2 x1 greater than this this is say x1 this is say x2 okay so x1 greater than or equal to 2 say somewhat like this one okay somewhat like this one and greater than or equal to means away from the you know this is the origin point this is the origin point so greater than or equal to 2 means it will be facing outwards so this will be the region so you can see there is no feasible region over here as because they are all directed towards this one this x2 greater than 3 this is directed towards this one you know in this direction and these are all 
you know first and second lines all are less than equal to type so they are directed towards the audience so there you can find there is no feasible solution so for this branch you can write here as only uh, no feasible region you can write over here no feasible region you can write okay now we have to proceed with this one okay it is x1 less than you know one now we have to construct now we are having this set of you know constraints and we have to draw the graph accordingly with this set of constraints okay say this is 3 and this is say 4 okay so we are having four now new constraints values we have to draw this or you have to plot these particular values of constraints accordingly in this particular graph only okay so this was the previous graph you already know this is a one value uh, this is a one line first first equation for this first equation we are having this line and the second equation we are having this one line and for third line third one we are having this one okay now we have to introduce this one as well now for x1 less than equal to 1 okay so x1 less than equal to 1 will somewhat lie say somewhat like this okay so you can write it as it is of less than type so i can write it as x1 less than equal to 1 and this is you know you know four four number of fourth equation of this constant okay now if you find the uh, feasible region it will be somewhere like there okay so it will be the new feasible region now if you consider this particular feasible region and if you find the you know corner points if you find the corner points over here here and here, here you will find that for particular this equation you will find x1 at this point after solving you know you will find as x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 3.42 so i can write it over here and the objective function will be coming out and uh, the value of z actually coming out 25 point you know 57 okay so i can write it over here as z equal to you know z equal to i can write 25.57 and x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 3.42 i can write it over here okay so so now you can see we are having x1 as integer value but x2 as well we are having again 3.42 as a non-integer value now again we have to move or we have to take this as, as a node and we have to construct the branches as well okay so we have to again construct the branches by taking or you can say by considering this non-integer value that is x2 equal to 3.42 now this x2 value is somewhat say 3.42 this lies in between 3 and 4 so two limits will be less than or equal to 3 and x2 greater than or equal to 4 only okay so we have to make branch using these two values say uh, x2 you know greater than equal to 4 you can write or x2 you know uh, less than equal to 3 you can write okay now if you consider these two values in the previous this one this equation having the extra one value i have to give you that x2 greater than equal to 3 this is the base you know this is the base so we have to construct the x2 greater than equal to 3 as well and this one as well as because we are having this one also and we are making branch from this one also so we have to consider all the values x2 greater than 3 x1 less than equal to 3 uh, sorry x2 greater than equal to 3 x1 less than equal to 1 and again we have to consider x2 greater than equal to 3 uh, 4 and x2 less than equal to 3 so we have to introduce all the you know new constant values as well okay so if you cons consider this all the values and if you uh, uh, draw this uh, you know on the graph we are having say this one is the x2 uh, x2 greater than say 3 now we are having x2 less than equal to 3 as well so this is x2 less than equal to 3 as well okay now this means x2 equal to 3 so this will be your only feasible re region for this particular two equations as because the feasible region lies on this point only as because x2 greater than equal to 3 and x2 less than equal to 3 that means the point lies in the straight line only okay now for considering the first line that is the x1 
less than we have considered this one x2 greater than or equal to 3 that is x2 greater than or equal to 3 now you have to consider x1 less than or equal to 1 so constructing that one you will be having say x1 less than or equal to 1 so we are having this one only okay so uh, it is less than so it will be directing towards you know origin point this also okay so this is your origin point so it will be directing to our or origin point only okay now this line you have to consider x2 greater than equal to 4 so x2 greater than equal to 4 somewhere in this region okay so you can greater than so it will be directing away from the origin so this one okay so this one so it can be written as x2 greater than equal to 4 you know so this you know this small region this small region you know is a feasible region for this particular graph considering all the new constant values that is x2 greater than 3 x1 greater less than 1 x2 less than 3 as well as x2 greater than equal to 4 now you are getting a small region feasible region over here now if you find these values considering this x2 greater than equal to 4 in this particular feasible region you will be getting i can write it over here as for this one as well you can write as x1 equal to 1 when you consider x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 3 this one this value we are having z value as you know 23 okay for this set now if you consider this set and we are having x1 equal to 0 and x2 equal to 4 you know and z value will be somewhat 24 so i can write it both the values over here as for this one we are having z equals to 24 x1 equal to 0 x2 equal to you know 4 okay now this one we are having z equals to 23 x1 equal to 1 and x2 we are having equal to you know 3 only okay now this is you know x1 equal to 1 and x2 equal to 3 these are two integer values so it can also be termed as lower bound as we cannot make any branches from this one also okay as because we are getting to you know uh, integer values of decision variables now this particular set is known as fathomed as i earlier told you the concept of fathomed and this you can also see this value is coming as 24 this is 23 as well coming as 23 and this is coming as 24 which is much lesser than the previous one optimum solution we are having 26.67 so this can also be termed as you know fathomed okay now uh, it is fathomed as because it is lower z value you can write it as lower z value okay lower z value as we found previous one as z equal to 27 okay where x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 2 this one so this one is also lower lower uh, you know fathomed okay this one also is fathomed now coming to the ultimate goal or aim of our this particular branch and bound technique we have this all this as fathomed values as we are having this integer values this integer values as well but but if you consider the oh, what should be the solution of this particular you know given problem what should be the solution you can say this should be the solution this j equals to 27 is the solution you can write is the optimal value should be 27 where we are having x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 2 so this can be considered as the optimal value of z or the maximized value of z and the corresponding optimal points you can say x1 equal to 3 and x1 equal to 2 now you can ask me why we are doing this all this exhaustive processes while we are getting this you know the value in the previous solutions only why we are doing this all these exhaustive solutions as well while we are getting this value in previous one already the look this has to be done this has to be performed as because we are having two branches and we are having one integer as a uh, one uh, set of values as non-integer type look this is the uh, rule you have to perform but if you are getting a greater value you know or 27 value value of 27 in this particular set then the, that will be the you know optimal value but as we are getting lesser value uh, 23 and 24 so we cannot consider this value as we are already having this value as greater one the optimal value of z as 27 previously in x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 2 but you have to perform you have to check 
whether they are giving uh, you know much optimal value in a later section of uh, iteration or you can say uh, performing branches okay so you have to perform this all okay but you are lucky enough if you get the value already earlier okay so this is all you know about the branch and bound technique where you have to make branches up to you are getting the optimal value of the chart and one more thing you have to keep in mind you have to find the optimal values in a integer type that is not in a decimal part you are having integer as x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 2 so this is our main aim of branch and bound technique in integer programming we have to find integer values of x1 and x2 which maximizes or in which the optimal solution is founded for the maximization of z okay so maximized value of this particular solution is 27 and the integer values of this corresponding optimal value of z is x1 equal to 3 and x2 equal to 2 only so thank you thank you for watching thank you very much